Hello everybody. This is a demonstration of the Power Glide Pro Midline Catheter. We're gonna go over three things today. We're gonna discuss the catheter and its components. We'll talk a little bit about the basic kit for inserting the Power Glide Pro Midline. And then lastly, we'll do a demonstration using ultrasound guidance on our vascular axis phantom. So this is our Power Glide Pro Midline. This is the standalone catheter that just comes with this stat lock. You'll see that this is a 20 gauge here, but it also does come in an 18 gauge uh, and it's 10 centimeters in length. So let's open this package and take a look at the components here. So here's our catheter. Notice that it also comes with something to prep the skin, a uh, bio patch to place um, once the catheter is in, and then a stat lock, which will secure the catheter. So just quickly looking at the catheter, this is um, something called an AST midline. So that's an accelerated Sellinger technique. What that really means is that the guide wire for the catheter is built in. So as opposed to central lines, which you're familiar with placing, where we'll place the guide wire through a guiding needle and then thread the catheter over the top, the guide wire is already built in here. So if you can see, the components of this are fairly simple. Um, we have our uh, retractable guide wire here. You can see that as I move this forward, the guide wire engages and pulls back. Uh, and then we have wings, which is gonna allow us to pass the catheter off after the, the needle is threaded, excuse me, after the guide wire is passed. So you can see, we'll push the guide wire forward. And then once that's actually all the way forward, you're able to move the wings off. And I'm not gonna move it all the way now, because if I do, um, then I won't be able to get it back on. One thing I do wanna point out on this catheter is if we look really closely at the tip here, you'll notice that the needle sticks out by about three millimeters, and I'm gonna see if I can get that real close up compared to the catheter. So that's gonna be important when we're entering the vessel to know that we wanna make sure we advance our catheter sufficiently, excuse me, our needle sufficiently, so that when we pass the catheter off, it's not gonna get stuck on the vessel. So it's good to know that there's a three millimeter distance between the needle tip and the catheter right there. Okay, so let's go over our Power Glide Pro Midline Kit. This is the basic kit here and will contain everything you need to place the midline sterile. So notice this is a 20 gauge Power Glide Pro Midline, again, 10 centimeters. Note also that um, a sterile saline flush does come attached to the outside of the package. I already removed that and you'll need to make sure to dump this onto the field sterile. So let's go ahead and open our kit. Okay, so I'm gonna just pop it open here. Um, I will um, drop this into my sterile field. And the outside of that syringe is sterile. Remove some of these papers. A lot of these are instructions and then also something that can go in the patient's chart to know that this is a midline catheter and not a central line. We have sterile gloves. We have a thick absorbent uh, towel here, uh, an additional covering, um, and then let's look at the rest of the kit. So we have some sterile gauze, our Power Glide Pro catheter, chlorhexidine. This is our sterile probe cover. It's 48 inches long with gel inside it. We have a fenestrated drape here that's gonna go over the area that we're going to perform the midline. Um, and then we have uh, our setup for securing the device. So. Let's go ahead and pop this open and take a look. So we have some of the stuff we saw in the standalone kit. We have our stat lock, a sterile prep, uh, and then some more adhesive that will uh, you'll be able to hold the catheter down with. We also have our bio patch, extension tubing, another chlorhexidine, um, some gauze and tape, a little sticker that tells us this is not a central line, and then we also have our tegaderm that we'll be able to secure the catheter down with. Now we're gonna go over how to place the Power Glide Pro Midline catheter into this vascular axis phantom. So before we even get started with our kit, what I always like to do first is to evaluate for a vascular target before even getting started. 
So non sterily we'll play some gel and get our ultrasound and take a look. So put the probe on here, and you can see in the image we have a transverse view of a vessel in the center of the screen. And what I'm gonna do is I'm fanning away from myself and then fanning towards me, making sure that vessel is staying right in the center. Um, that tells me that this vessel is running perpendicular to my probe, and as I advance the catheter perpendicular to the probe, I'll know that I'll have a nice straight course into that vessel. I also like to confirm it's a vein by compressing down and making sure it's collapsing. Okay, and then I also like to put on color Doppler here uh, and see if there's any uh, arterial flow, just to be 100% sure. And since this is a vascular phantom, we're not even going to get venous flow, um, but in arterial, we'd expect to see pulsatile blood flow. So we'll turn that off and we're ready to start our procedure. All right, so let's go over the procedure now. So a couple of things you wanna remember before you actually get sterile is to make sure you have applied the tourniquet to the patient's arm and checked your vasculature and identified your target beforehand. Make sure the arm of the patient is extended and straightened. And I like to put some blankets underneath to make sure it stays extended. So now we're ready to go. We have our tourniquet on the patient. We have our vessel identified. I have placed my mask on and I have sterile gloves that came in the kit. So now we're ready to um, go ahead and prep our field. So what we'll do is I'll take our chlorhexidine. Again, these are sterile gloves. I'm gonna clean my surface here. Toss that out. Um, we'll get our fenestrated drape, place it over the patient, head is up. So we'll go ahead and put this on like this. And open this up. Okay. So now we have our fenestrated drape on the patient and we have a sterile field. So we'll go ahead and ready to get started. So I'm gonna get my ultrasound probe cover set up. So it comes with a sterile gel packet and our sterile probe sheath. Here's some rubber bands we'll use to secure it. So what you wanna do is put your hand into the bag like that and then you're going to open this up and put a little bit of gel in. Like that, and then we're ready to take the probe. So you wanna make sure you have someone who can hand you the probe sterilely. We'll go ahead and pull that off. Perfect. And now I take my little rubber bands and I'm just gonna go ahead and put those over the top. Okay, and now our ultrasound's ready and we're ready to go. So again, I'm gonna put a little bit more gel and again, evaluate my target. So I always check my probe dot and make sure that's facing my left side and the probe marker is on the left side of the screen. We're gonna take a look here. I've identified my vein, I move back and forth. Looks like it's still nice in the center. I'm ready to place my catheter. So really easy. Uh, again, I just check my wire, make sure it comes out, put it back in, and I'm ready to get started. So I'm gonna do this in a transverse plane, find my vessel, again, move my probe back and forth, and now I'm ready to advance. So I'm gonna advance right underneath my, my ultrasound, see my needle, move my probe forward, needle forward, probe forward, needle forward, and now, Looks like our catheter tip's right in the center. So I like to drop my angle down, um, and then I'm gonna move my probe forward until the needle disappears, advance my needle further, advance my probe for, forward and further, and I like to walk that catheter in a bit. Now I feel like I've got a good amount of my catheter in, I'm gonna go ahead and slide my wire off. You can even turn and see that that wire's running right against the back of the vessel, okay? And now I'm gonna take my left hand, holding my right hand still, and I'm gonna slide that wings all the way off. And now it's passing into that vessel. And then I'm gonna pull the catheter out. And notice that it actually locks and there's no blood coming out. 
and that's because there's a plug right here. So this is also not sharp anymore. So just so you know, um, this is a secure uh, system such that you can't poke yourself. So now I want to actually attach a hep lock to this. So I'm going to lift up my wings. So the wings actually lift backwards like this. And I'm going to actually pull out this little stopper. And you can see that sort of came out. And now blood normally would be coming out here. Um, so I'm ready to actually put my hep lock on. And you can decide uh, if you're going to use an extender or not, but it does come with one. So I will take my extending tubing and just quickly flush it. And attach that on here. I'll just pull back on the syringe to see if I get blood back and then flush it through. Okay. And then I'm going to just clamp this for now. Okay. So now we're ready to secure our catheter. So what we're going to want to do is first clean up the area. So prep the area with some gauze. So we'll clean this off. Go ahead and take our bio patch. And we'll slip that right underneath, just like that. And then let's take our stat lock out. That's gonna help us secure it to the skin. It makes it really easy. So you can see there's a little hole here. Um, and that's what actually this little tiny blip in the catheter is gonna go through. So there's a little blip on the end of this catheter, purple. Um, we're actually gonna attach that. So I'm gonna pull this straight back slightly just to show you. So we're gonna put it over the catheter and I'm gonna clip it down just like that. And our little piece is gonna snap in just like that. And then all you do is simply take a wing and strap it down, lift this side up, take a wing, pull, and then we've secured our catheter. And lastly, we'll take our tegaderm. And again, normally on the patient's arm, we would kind of pull this away just so we have more space um, once you've placed the catheter, but you can pull it out so you're able to secure the tegaderm to the patient. So I usually would just rip this through and just tear across like that. And then pull it out so you've exposed the patient's skin. And again, because this is a model, it's not gonna look exactly the same, but we would actually just place our tegaderm right over uh, the barrel of the catheter and wrap it around. And then lastly, we'll take our piece off here. And now our tegaderm is in place. And lastly, one thing I didn't mention just to be sure is make sure you get a Heplock because if you do notice here, I attached my syringe to their extension tubing, but there was no hep lock, so I can't really take this off until I get a hep lock. So um, you can clamp this down, quickly drop a hep lock on there, and you're all done. And that's essentially the procedure.